The focus of today's war strategy would be the seal of God for those that mourn. And the scripture would be Ezekiel chapter 9. And it says, He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them to have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's ink horn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the Lord of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the rider's ink horn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, Will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perversiveness. For they say the Lord hath forsaken the earth. And the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the ink horn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. And so, brothers and sisters, looking at Ezekiel chapter 9, for those who are familiar with the book of Revelation chapter 7, we are reminded of the angel that comes from the east with the seal of God to mark it upon the foreheads of the servants of God. And we see here that as it was in Revelation 7, do we see an event happening and similarity to that in Ezekiel chapter 9. But we get a very important insight concerning Revelation 11 and the sealing of the 144,000 and what was the requirements of them receiving the seal highlighted here in Ezekiel 9. Now, am I saying that there will only be 144,000 that would be sealed? No. What I'm saying is at least 144,000 of those of the tribes of Israel would be sealed. Only the Lord knows if there would be a plan for others outside of Israel to be sealed with the seal of the living God. And so in the scripture, it says that he heard the voice of the Lord cry out into his ears, saying, Cause them to have charge over the city to draw near. These men, 
that the Lord spoke of. The six men that had weapons of destruction in their hands were the angels that were assigned to have charge over the house. In the same way that angels have charge over many territories and lands around the world. And the hands was the slaughter weapon, the weapon of destruction as the destroyers move throughout the land. And then, when the destruction begins to happen in these cities, we learn why the destruction comes. While Ezekiel was pleading and interceding for these cities, and this is how it is today as many of our brothers and sisters, many of God's children intercede for these nations. And we see that as Ezekiel was interceding for Jerusalem and was wondering, will the Lord destroy all the residue of Israel? The Lord gives a response as to why this judgment came. And the Lord also declares that to be why it shall come in our time. It says, Judah is exceeding great in its sin. That the iniquity of the house of Israel was exceedingly great in his eye. That it was full of blood. Full of murder. Of all kinds. And it says that the city was full of perversiveness. So there is the bloodshed. The senseless slaughter that happens. And think about the world today of all those who are being senselessly slaughtered. All over the world, in the Middle East, in Africa, in Asia, in North America, in South America, the senseless slaughter, the killing with no purpose. And then think of the great perversiveness of all kinds that we see roaming to and fro about our lands. The perversiveness that are the abominations before the eyes of God. So the Lord says that in in this manner, in this reprobate mindset, do they believe that the Lord does not see, that the Lord has forsaken the land, that the Lord has forsaken the earth. And so the Lord says that in their reprobate mindness about the senseless slaughter, the senseless bloodshed and the perversiveness of many kind. The Lord says that he will not spare. He will not have pity. But what he sees with his eyes, that is what shall be recompensed back upon the people. This is why he says, but I will recompense their way upon their head. This is in verse 10. So it means that the source of the fury The judgment of God that he shall send upon the nations shall be in accordance with the recompense of their ways coming back upon their heads. This will be the ultimate fulfillment of you reap what you sow. So this is why we have to be mindful about what is in our hearts, brothers and sisters, because that in which we have sown in our hearts giving birth to it through our actions will be that which will come upon our own heads in a time to come. And so many are looking to and fro and wondering, where would these events be? Where shall it begin? When shall a tribulation happen? When shall the, tri- when shall the trigger events take place that shall begin the end time path? We need not have to look any further, brothers and sisters, because the Lord has answered it in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 6. And it says, Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women, but not but come not near any man upon, upon whom is the mark. And then the Lord ends by saying, Begin at my end sanctuary judgment must first come to the house of God so if we want to know where the great tribulation will happen if we want to know how it shall begin the Lord says 
begin at my sanctuary as he speaks to be the beginning of the wrath of God to come. And so in the scripture it says that these men that had these slaughter weapons began at the, at the house of God and they were slain. So brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying that judgment, the beginning of the end time is going to happen beginning with his church. Separating the wheat from the tares, the lukewarm for those on fire from him. The division will begin in his house first. Once his house is judged, then shall judgment go to the rest of the world. Verse 7, it says, And he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain, go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. The churches are going to be defiled. Much tribulation is going to come to those who are not truly for God, or those who are lukewarm in their ways, where they shall face tribulation to come out of their lukewarmness, and not perish in the lake of fire. It's going to be a time of refining for those who refuse God. That are called by his name. But then there is hope in the scripture. It says here concerning those to receive the seal. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sighed, and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So how will these men, a Revelation 7, the 144,000, how will they be sealed? What would be the criteria of how they receive the mark of the living God? The scripture gives us the answer. Their hearts were broken because of the bloodshed. Their hearts were broken because of the perversiveness. Their hearts were broken because of the abominations that fill the earth. So this is not a matter of me speaking of men or women or just men being sealed. This is beyond that because the Lord knows what he would do in his time. But to be those in chapter nine that receive the mark of God, which is the seal of his protection, there is a brokenness in their hearts to the abominations that was taking place, to the senseless murder that was taking place throughout all the earth. So now, this is why we have to check our hearts, brothers and sisters. If our hearts are not like those that were just spoken here, in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, where when we see the abominations and we are okay with it, when we see the perversions and we're okay with it, when we see the filth begin to fill the world and we're either complacent to it, indifferent about it, or in full support of it, understand that you will not be receiving this mark of protection when the Lord begins to bring forth destruction in the midst thereof. The defining criteria for these men was the fact that their hearts, and it could have been women and children as well, but the defining factor here was that their hearts were broken because of the bloodshed, because of the perversion, because of the abominations that surrounded the land. Today, are we broken when we see the senseless slaughter of our brothers and sisters, of those who are even of the reprobate status against each other? Does it break our hearts that there is death going on because people are cold hearted and senselessly slaughtering each other into the lake of fire? Because this breaks our father's heart. 
Are we broken by these tragedies? Does it, does it cut us? Or are we indifferent to them? And say, well, this does not affect my land, so therefore I am not concerned? Are we indifferent to our brothers and sisters being martyred over into the Middle East and Africa? What about the perversiveness, the perversions that is happening to our children in the school systems? And the many others that we see happening around us. Does it break our hearts to know that these things break God's heart? Because it goes against who he is? Or are we all in full support of it? This scripture, once again, I'll read it, read it again. Because this is a defining line as to those who receive this seal of protection and those who are not. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Let us pray. Father, once again, we thank you for instructing us, for teaching us of your ways, calling us to be prepared for that which shall come in our time. And if not in our time, in our children's time. And if not in their time, even for those that come after them. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will help prepare our hearts, O oh Lord, to be those worthy to be those counted worthy to escape all these things. Because you said, Father, in your word that we must pray that we will be found worthy to escape all these things. And in your word, Father, we just learn how these men were counted worthy to escape the hand of destruction that swept over Jerusalem and your house in the time of Ezekiel. In order for us, Father, to be counted worthy to escape all these things, we need to have a heart that breaks as yours break because of the abominations of the earth, because of the perversiveness of man's ways, because of the senseless shedding of blood. And if our heart does not break as yours break, then a refinement will take place to get our heart into alignment with yours. And so there is the tribulation. And so there is that judgment must first begin in your house. So I pray, Father, that you will begin to work in each and every one of our hearts to help our hearts to bleed as yours bleed, O oh God, in sorrow for the nations. To feel, Father, what is in your heart so that it break our hearts in the same and that we can be in alignment with you to pray, O oh God, and to intercede, O oh God. And to know of your ways, O oh God, to be sorrowful and broken in our heart to see what is happening in the earth that you created. For if we do not have a heart that breaks like yours, then we are not going to be worthy, counted worthy to escape all these things. For it was the, the sighing and the cry of the abominations of the land that allowed these individuals in Ezekiel 9, verse 4, these men to receive of your soul of protection. And so, Father, we are in need of a great change in our hearts. We need, Father, for a serious move of your, of your mighty hands, O oh God, to do a heart surgery in us, to fix our callous heart, O oh God, so that we would be not of those, O oh God, where the love of many waxing cold. Help us, O oh Lord, to submit to you, submit our hearts to you so you can do that work. So we can be those, O oh God, that have a heart that sigh and cry for the abominations. If we have been complacent, if we have been in agreement with that, which is not of you. For if we grieve not, if we sorrow not by the violations of your word, O oh God, and come into agreement with it as if it is okay, then we know, O oh God, there is the fire of refinement that will be done. 
Protect us, O oh God, for what is to come. Help us, O oh God, to have a heart that makes us worthy to escape all of these things. For if a heart be changed not as it was with these men, we will not be found worthy to escape all of these things. And who knows, O oh God, maybe this is the requirement for the rapture. For these men, Father, were sealed in the midst of great destruction in the same way as the 144,000 would be sealed in the midst of great destruction. That truly there can only be these 144,000 on the earth because those who have the heart that sigh and cry for the abominations were found worthy to escape all these things and raptured out from this earth to where the church that is left, left behind, the lukewarm church, had to go through the refining fire. Father, forgive us. Forgive me and forgive all those, O oh God, who has had hearts callous and indifferent and cold to the suffering of others, O oh God, and to the abominations and the bloodshed that has been all around us. Lord, we love you and we thank you. May you forgive us, O oh God. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Keep us covered in your blood, O oh God, and help us, O oh God, to be a bride without spots, wrinkle, or blemish. And may you be, help us, Father, to be in the position of those counted worthy to escape all these things. We love you, Lord, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.